Okay, so Monkey Man's now out and Dev Patel's action-packed film packs a punch that's made it one of my favourite films of the year so far. Throughout this video, we're going to talk about its deeper meaning and also what we thought about the movie as a whole. If this is your first time here, then welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, and this is the channel where we go bananas and break down the big movie releases. Obviously, it's Heavy Spoilers ahead, and if you enjoy it, then please hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you love the breakdown as well, and we'd of course love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Without the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into Monkey Man. The film itself opens with the story of Hanuman, and we get a crash course on the legend. I'm not too familiar with the deity, but obviously the figure's iconic and has influenced lots of myths and stories. In the beginning, we learn that Hanuman was looking to the trees, which is where he spotted a juicy shiny mango. Reaching for this, he then realised it was the sun, and the other gods punished him for it. This ties heavily into the film, and it's here that we're also introduced to Kid. Now in the film, he takes on several different monikers, including Bobby, which is the name I'm going to use for the video. Now it turned out that when he was younger, his home was raided by a corrupt police force in order to strip the people of their land. This was under the guidance of the Baba Shakti, who's a religious figure that's been attempting to gain power in the country. Using his followers and the police as a weapon, he stripped the land from the people and has ruined India's infrastructure. Now he's in bed with the politicians as they head towards a landslide victory on the night of Diwali. Now during the raid, Bobby's mother was killed by Chief Singh, who burned her body along with the pair's home. Desperately trying to put the fire out, it ended up burning his hands, and since then, Bobby's sworn to get revenge. Moonlighting as a fighter that dons a monkey mask, he goes under the name Kong, which is the second big monkey rocking the name with a movie out now. One day, we might even get a Monkey Man vs Kong, which would be a sick three second YouTube short. Either way, he's bossed around by the fight promoter, played by Charlotte Copley. However, it's allowed him to train his body so he can reach the peak and now get revenge. Infiltrating a prestigious nightclub, Bobby works his way until he's allowed in the VIP. Here he finally gets a shot at the chief, but things don't go according to plan. Barely escaping with his life, this ties into Hanuman, who climbed to the top and then was knocked down by the gods. Now one thing you're going to notice straight away when watching the movie is just how well the action scenes are put together. It's brutal, bloody and over the top, but there's a real grit to it that makes it stand out from the crowd. Culturally, this is steeped in lots of things, with there being comments on religion and politics. There's clear inspiration from things like the real-life farmers' protests and police corruption that's said to exist within India. I'm not 100% up on it, so I don't feel confident in commenting further, but you can tell there's certain things here yeah, that the movie tackles with which have authenticity to them. What I like about the film, though, is that you don't have to know any of this stuff in order to enjoy it, and at its core, it's just a good old-fashioned revenge story. I'll say that, but where I think the change within the movie happens is that it starts to become even more than that. Bobby is saved and nursed back to health by a commune which is headed up by a figure named Alpha. Bound in a river, the light from the helicopter shines through like the sun, which marks the beginning of his transformation. They too have been ostracised and Alpha ends up giving Bobby an herb that enhances his abilities. What Bobby ends up becoming is someone who fights for the downtrodden and beaten, which is seen in several different characters. His friend Alfonso lost a leg and gets bullied by the higher-ups because of it, and he too has to go on the run after Bobby's failed attempt. At the King's Club, there's also women forced into sex work, with Bobby also being a voice for these as well. Although it's just getting called the Indian John Wick, I, I think the movie manages to go far beyond that. Now, it does wear its influences on its sleeve, with Wick even getting name-dropped at one point in the movie. However, the cultural aspects are what really helps to elevate it, and we watch it evolve into more than just revenge. When discussing the movie, producer Jordan Peele summed it up really well, and he said the following when breaking it all down. What I'm really drawn to in this film is the theme of revenge and becoming an Avenger. The character realises that revenge may not be enough, that he has to fight for everyone. With it being so steeped in politics and also featuring so many downtrodden characters that take a stand when Monkey Man rises, you really get the sense in the movie when you're watching it too. Now Bobby ends up returning to the club and he works his way to the top by killing those that try to stop him. This includes his Xbox Queenie, who thumbs he cuts off to get access to the higher floors. Might have been a finger. Couldn't really tell, mate. But the only time I want to see you bringing the thumbs up is when you hit that button. Shabow! Now eventually, Bobby kills Chief Singh with him standing over his corpse, beating him like how he did to his mother. We pan up to see a reflection in the mirrored ceiling, mirroring how Bobby looked down on his mother's corpse as she lay dying. Eventually, Bobby makes it to Baba Shakti, where we catch a painting of Hanuman's triumphant victory. 
To all he also celebrates the victory of light over darkness and good over evil. That's why it's so important to have this here, as it's showing that Bobby's finally taken down corruption in the country. However, there's a sort of bittersweet ending to it, as Bubba Shakti has a weapon hidden inside the shoes that he presents as being designed to not hurt small creatures when someone's walking. These have scriptures embedded in the side, but they're also deadly, which we see demonstrated here. This in itself symbolises the villain who appears as humble and safe but he's hiding a dark secret. Now this unfortunately is what also takes down Bobby but he manages to kill the character before seemingly succumbing to his wounds. However you can read into this that the corruption that's entered the country could also end up taking down good people with it. I think it's symbolic of the damage that allowing this to gain a foothold can bring and it's very much like what the Baba Shakti says when discussing Bobby. He describes him as an ember that could burn the whole house down, which in the end is something that he does. Now it's in this that I think the message of the movie becomes universal, and it goes beyond just being restricted to one time. It's described as being like cyclical violence, and I definitely think that there is some truth in that. That's why I feel like though you might not be able to unpack all the social commentary, you'll probably be able to find something to relate to. By the end I think that Monkey Man becomes a figure that people can rally behind and he's a symbol of rising up much like Hanuman. Whereas he went to the clouds to grab the sun, we've seen Monkey Man travel from the underworld to the top of the kings. He's brought it all crashing down during Diwali and has become a figure that people can martyr in what may be his death. Now, they do leave it open ended so the character could still be alive and we see him collapse rather than him being pronounced dead. I feel like a sequel has some potential as well because the movie right now is getting a lot of love. Patel deserves it as well, as you can tell he's been put through the ringer. When working on the film he said, I think the action genre has sometimes been abused by the system. I wanted to give it a real soul, real trauma, real pain and I wanted to infuse it with a little bit of culture. I think he manages to do that really well but he also had a lot of trouble behind the scenes. Due to the pandemic the movie was delayed and almost cancelled. He also broke his hand while filming, but due to COVID safety protocols, he couldn't get immediate medical attention. After what was a gruelling shoot, they finally got it finished, but originally the movie it was just going to go to Netflix. However, after Jordan Peele saw it, he thought it deserved a theatrical release and bought it from Netflix under his Monkey Paw Productions. I'm glad he did too, as I think it deserves being seen in a theatre, as it's a brilliant movie with a lot going on. Patel really excels in the director's chair, but he's also gripping as the lead too. There's not really that much dialogue, but he manages to tell the story without saying much, and the movie relies more on images than just dialogue. That to me is a strength, as it makes the movie more universal, because you're telling things through the story instead of words. I think Patel's done a brilliant job, and it's crazy thinking how far the guys come from skins. Monkey Man is definitely worth watching if you're checking out this video without going to see it and I think it's a movie that is 100% worth your time. Hopefully you've enjoyed us going through the film and obviously I'd also love to hear your thoughts and what you took from it. I know there's lots of things that I want to have picked up on due to culture so if you've got knowledge on that you know definitely leave it below. I'd 100% love to read it as it just helps me appreciate the film even more. Please drop a like as well and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society then please click the join button. You'll get early access to videos every week and it goes such a long way to helping us out. If you want to get some heavy spoilers merch you've also got our t-shirt line located below the video that will let you pick up all kinds of tops like our Theory Time one, House of Dragons stuff, Marvel tees and more. We drop new designs on there all the time too so definitely keep an eye out for them. Now if you want something else to watch, you've got a breakdown on screen right now going over everything you need to know about Godzilla x Kong. MT did a fantastic breakdown on the film and talked about where he thinks things are going to go next time. Definitely head over there right after this and without the way, huge thank you for sitting through the video. I've been your host Paul, I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.